Dear colleagues, I think that this uh, question is quite relevant for everybody and all those who sign the morpholo uh, morphological uh, diagnosis. So, in the U.S. in 1977, they adopted a program for the reference center's establishment, and they claimed that uh, they should resolve a large number of uh, mistakes and problems. For example, the pr reproductivity of uh, uh, molecular diagnosis, four years have passed, and uh, on the website of U.S. Pathologist Institute, Institutions, they published their, uh, their recommendation how to reduce the pathology mistakes if we get deep into the details. So they recognize the inefficiency of reference uh, systems in trying to resolve these issues. They are dealing with uh, large numbers of questions and issues. Uh, why do I think like that? I will explain now why. So, at so the analytical stage of morphological research, according to a number of authors, one third of mistakes takes place. So, that is a very fast uh, stage of analyzing an image. So, we are ready for that. And we have a very good microslide that has been developed with a very good formula and a lab assistant prepared a good sample. And something happens and uh, the output, so one doctor draws one conclusion, another one draws another conclusion, though they look at the same microslide. And if you view this image, you can see two different pictures, though the image is the same. So, when we formulate uh, when the authors formulated these recommendations, they emphasized that there is no unified understanding of mistakes. They analyzed 100 publications and they draw the conclusion that authors uh, understand by mistakes different phenomena and concepts. So there are some misunderstandings and misconceptions. So what result does it have for a patient? According to them, according to the authors that suggested these recommendations, and the factors that help you to rightly interpret the diagnosis, uh, the experience and uh, the expertise of pathologists are the key elements. Then they compare the results, then they standardize and perform the test, and then they reconsider the microslides and they emphasize that in this group of factors, um, experience and expertise are the key thing, but all the recommendations are dedicated uh, to how this microslide should be reconsidered. So they talk about one thing and then they describe another thing. But if we talk about the experience and expertise of pathologists, there are no problems with expertise because the internet provides an access to a large number of uh, publications and monographies and you can use it uh, freely, unlike, uh, for example, the past. 15 years ago, we did not have such an opportunity, so the situation has uh, drastically changed. And another situation, experience of pathologists, there are no problems with that as well. And uh, for example, in the past, it was considered that this is a unique uh, event, unique thing. Uh, and then you can, uh, when it happens, you can share it with everybody. Uh, but uh, then it, it turns out that uh, uh, even um, a pigeon can look into the microscope and then uh, can uh, be, um, and then it can learn to uh, assess the situation in 85%. So there are some short term courses, internet based courses with virtual slides. So, what is the difference between these two situations on the left and on the right? Well, but uh, the situation, the difference is with the monitor. So the first recommendation that they uh, mention is uh, that uh, pathologists uh, should have the special order of reconsideration of the microslide. So to avoid misunderstanding and some misconceptions. So this is for the first time in the recommendation um, that they mentioned that interpretation mistakes are an objective phenomena. It is not uh, the lack of competence. Uh, this is an objective thing. And we have to take that into consideration. That is the research of 2012 
uh, the classification of tumors performed by WHO and they checked what uh, uh, results they got. Uh, we will not repeat that, but the reproductivity of uh, different types of expert amounted to 0.77. And uh, now this is the only thing uh, these people uh, have uh, uh, thought about. So it's an objective thing and uh, they um, it, it just they didn't coincide in their viewpoint but there was no problem with that and they also give the overall results of a large number of uh, research and you can see here that any area like cytology uh, it's not about cytologists it's not about radiotherapists and other specialists engaged in the interpretation of different images we face the same situation the percentage of important mistakes uh, is uh, from one to seven percent in any localization so that is a universal phenomenon and we have to understand that we have to talk about that another recommendation is a timely reconsideration of uh, cases and it has positive impact on the treatment and they emphasize that it is important uh, to have prospective reconsideration and re-examination for example if i had a look on the micro slide and anna sergeyevna is the head of the department she should re-examine that before the result leaves the laboratory so there is no sense for you in october for example now uh, many of our specialists are on vacations and then you know, we hurry up and in in october then we uh, decide to uh, to make out what was uh, decided in June, but uh, uh, it is it should be done um, uh, like. Uh after the decision is made. So the retrospective re-examination should take place where a prospective re-examination is not possible. But uh, in our realities, it is very important, uh, it is very uh, often impossible for a head of department to, to re-examine that um, B because it is physically impo impossible in some of the cases. The third recommendation is that re-examination uh, should be uh, carried out in accordance with the opportunities of laboratories. So they emphasize a number of uh, requirements of the, of the specialists who will reconsider that, uh, a necessary amount of expertise and experience and objectivity. There are some frequently asked questions posted on the website and one of them uh, uh, is uh, who are the judges who perform this re-examination so what is the difference between this specialist and the initial specialist why this opinion is considered like a more authoritative one the author of recommendation emphasizes that uh, uh, the second specialist is not always right and that has to be taken into consideration and that is the right thing to mention and another aspect, the experts uh, re-examined uh, all the material of uh, endocrine and all other types of research for four years. And clarification of the diagnosis amounts to 88%. Uh, the uh, out of uh, 10 uh, in nine cases uh, the diagnosis was not changed it was just clarified clarified a little bit is that a mistake no no it's not critical it's not a mistake uh, okay the diagnosis has been clarified but this is a subject for another type of discussions uh, so it comes into some other areas not medical ones and the fourth recommendation pathologists should follow up and register the results of re-examinations so they should have their own uh, book where it is registered it is done in the framework of the department but there are some clarifications and all these results uh, uh, afterwards should be brought uh, to uh, the first specialist who examined the microslide so there should be some uh, feedback from him about the second opinion it should not come uh, like uh, it should not happen like we do because all of us uh, have their own archives so uh, we have to increase uh, the number of uh, coordination a number of uh, consensus it's not only um, uh, it's uh, true for all other types like prostate and pancreas in terms, for example, of evaluating that according to Gleason uh, gradation, 
because that is the different viewpoints about Gleason and how they grade it. And nobody knows how we can overcome that and we can offer some methodology. But this is like taken for granted. And um, here we can see, for example, 0.3% uh, uh, as for a typical endometrial uh, hyperplasia. And uh, in, uh, for example, breast cancer in situ, about 60%, that is the number of uh, mistakes. So one specialist sees that in one way, the other sees in the other way. So it is not um, clearly, evidently expressed. So the results can be uh, different and there is no universal grade. And another factor that authors uh, note, for example, some diagnoses can have uh, inter-observational variations and options. So it can be different. It can be viewed differently. We didn't have that in the past. We have never heard such things. But they do exist in morphology. It turns out like this. So it has to be brought to everybody. Everybody has to be informed about that because that changes the relationship between the colleagues and we cannot compare the laboratories. The mistakes can be different and they can be interpreted uh, differently according to the authors. But I believe that the authors are not very correct here because they put this limitation. But later on it could lead to the war of everybody against everybody. You can discuss this within your team who is better, who is worse, but the range of the possible deviations is nerd, are not determined. It, and uh, still there is disagreement. Does it mean that when this uh, grade is very low, do you have that you are incompetent uh, colleagues? Uh, this means the high uh, uh, Interobserval variations. It is said that it's better to revoice the slides. The teams who are not able to find their errors look for these errors not correctly. Each pathologist who is not able to find his or hers uh, her error is not a professional. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any uh, questions? Do you have any questions, any comments? Thank you.